Are you ready to branch out, to take a leap of faith, to love yourself and others fully? Then let go of whatever no longer serves you to take action now on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills, living it up, loving it up and letting it go. Erica will energize and excite you to power up your passionate dream that sets your soul on fire. With Erica's E3 approach, equipping, empowering, and enlightening yourself so you can be yourself for yourself. Get ready and get rooted to live a life without regrets, without what ifs, without should haves, and especially without empty feelings from a life unexplored. This hit show helps you build powerful and intentional roots to live it up, love it up, and let it go. Get fearlessly ready and powerfully rooted in your yes with your host, Erica Gifford Mills, and be fearless about your more and stand in your yes. Now on Get Rooted Radio. Welcome, everyone. I am Erica Gifford Mills, and you are listening to Get Rooted Radio, living it up, loving it up, letting it go right here on Transformation Talk Radio. A big shout out to my producer today, Kent. Hello, Kent. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It would be better. I mean, I have my queen shirt on today, but clearly my dog, King, doesn't realize that that this is a monarchy and he needs to be quiet during this hour. (laughs) So today, as is appropriate in this month of love, we continue the topic of relationships. Now, last episode, we talked about dating and spoke with a matchmaker. So if you missed that episode, you will want to download the podcast. It was a lot of fun and even got me thinking about love and jumping back into that dating pool, which if you heard the episode, it was a wild, wild west. So I'm, I'm ready to jump back in. Um, but today we are chatting with a relationship coach about five keys to creating a great relationship. Because let's, let's face it, if we're going to be in a relationship, it should be a great one, right? However, being in a romantic relationship or marriage isn't easy. It shouldn't feel like a chore, but it is hard work. Um, so today we'll discuss how to make it as easy as possible to stay connected with your partner and to create both a relationship and a life that you both love. And with that, let me introduce my guest. And, and I apologize, I was practicing it, but I might say it wrong. Allison Orlowski is a relationship and intimacy coach who works with individuals in long-term relationships and marriages to really level up the passion play and partnership so that her clients enjoy a relationship full of all the love, support, respect, and fun that they crave. After surviving two divorces and spending the next 10 years committed to learning all she could about relationships, Allison realized that of all her relationship successes and failures actually had a bigger purpose, and that was to coach others how to create their own great relationship. From that was born for love of you coaching, which represents not only the love we have for our partner, but also the love for ourselves and focuses on how we are. It's really how both are imperative to a healthy relationship and fulfilling relationship and marriage. And Allison's reliability, open minded and unique perspectives and out of the box philosophies offer a unique way to support her clients in developing a relationship that fulfills their wants, needs and desires so that they can live that life that they love. So with that, please welcome my guest, Allison. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for so much. Thank you so much for having me, Erica. So excited to be here. So I know I kind of gave a little background, but share with us how you got into relationship coaching in more greater detail and why you are called to do this work. Yeah, I really, I want to share a little bit of my background and to get into that answer. And um, because it just, I think it speaks to a lot of my, um, the purpose and what I went through. So when I was 21, shortly out of college, I was pregnant, um, not planned, got married because I thought that was the right thing to do. Um, I was born and raised Catholic. That was the family expectations. And within a year of that marriage, it became abusive. And it probably was before, but that's when it it got to a point where I'm like, this is no bueno. (laughs) And, and started um, the divorce process for that. And um, so that only lasted a couple of years, but that was pretty traumatic. Then from that place, dated, you know, spent a couple of years alone, dated, met another man. Um, he was a really good person. 
we got married and had two more children. And a year before my, or a week before my little guy turned one, he came home and he's like, I want a divorce. And I was completely blindsided by that. Um, even to this day, there wasn't really, the, you know, it was not hindsight wasn't 2020. And that was um, never did I think that I would be divorced once, let alone twice by the time I was 35. But I did know that I deserved to be loved. And so I wasn't, so we went through therapy. We spent six months in therapy because I also said, I need to know that I did everything that I could to make this marriage work. I didn't want to have any regrets. And I also knew guilting him, shaming him, anything like that into staying in the marriage because I, I made a commitment and I didn't want this to be my, my outcome two times in a row. Um, but from that place, I really could see how I valued, like I knew that I deserved to be loved. So I spent the next few years dating and through that learned so much about who I was, what was important to me, what I wanted, what I didn't want. And from that experience, I really recognized a couple of things. One is that we are not taught how to do relationships. <laughs> there isn't any classes. The best that we learn for most of us are our parents and, and perhaps the people closest to us. And so we learn maybe what we want by great examples, maybe what we don't want by bad examples. And, but there's always skills. Like even if your parents had a great relationship and they didn't argue, maybe you never learned what it was like to have a healthy argument with your partner. So there's just so many different aspects to relationships that we weren't taught and we kind of all sludge our way through them. So that was the first thing. And then the second thing, as I went through dating and relationships and really started to do a lot of the inner work myself, because I'm like, I don't want the third time is, there, is either going to be a charm. I don't want it to be three strikes and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really tried to like study relationships and, and learn where's my responsibility in this. Like right now I'm the common denominator and these experiences. And um, so I spent a lot of time on that. And what I, one thing that I recognized is that every time I leveled up my self-worth, my relationship leveled up. And I didn't necessarily know that going into this, that wasn't a conscious thought, but after my first divorce, um, I later found out that he's a narcissistic sociopath. So that was a whole experience unto itself but knowing I didn't deserve to be treated that way. And then in my next relationship, my next marriage, knowing, hey, well, this wasn't the big blowout fighting kind of divorce, that if he didn't love me, I deserve, I knew I deserved to be loved and to be with somebody that loved me. And then as I continued moving into my own self, um, personal development, how my self-worth and even the men that I was dating and, you know, creating boundaries and, you know, um, speaking up for what I wanted and what was valuable to me and stepping into my power in that way. And I think that's so important is, is that, and we're going to get into that in the next, um, next segment. So I don't want to get too much into it, but it is knowing our self-worth and knowing that we deserve to be loved and, and doing what you did, right. The, the personal development to see where can I change? Not that it, you know, it always takes two for any relationship to work, but where do I need to change and being happy on by yourself before you go into that next relationship. And that is so important. One of the questions I wanted to ask is that, and I know I get this um, question a lot in my coaching practice, and I'm sure you do too, is what is the difference between what you do in this coaching and therapy and counseling? Yes, absolutely. The simplest way that I have learned to explain it, or that I think comes across therapy slash counseling heals the past and coaching creates the future. So there can be a place for both. Um, there is a place for both. And from that place, though, from coaching, like 
and we'll talk about this in one of the future segments too, about moving forward. And what does that look like? And what do you want to create in your relationship rather than hanging on to all the things that have happened in the past? Because often, particularly in romantic relationships, there's, well, there's place, you know, for, I, I like this analogy that when you're sick and it's something substantial, you go to the cardiologist, the oncologist, the neurologist, somebody that, but when you have a paper cut, you're probably not running to the doctor. You're probably putting a bandaid on it. Right. And so a lot of things that happen in the relationship aren't things that necessarily need the therapist, i.e. cardiologist, oncologist. There are those things that we put band-aids on and then we pile up the band-aids and then we're like, look, here are all my band-aids <laughs> and we just hold on to the band-aids. Yep. And, and it's, so, it's like when a start, a fight starts, it starts because somebody didn't put their dirty clothes in the basket. Right. But that's yeah. not really the issue. <laughs> right. Exactly. So from that coaching place, we're able to really look at that. And sometimes coaching can be therapeutic because we do have to kind of look at the past a little bit to understand patterns or where, you know, some things have happened in the past that give a little bit of context but ultimately we're really trying to create the future. And when I explain that to people, it really creates a new level of excitement for working together because that's way more fun to create something new, even within your current relationship than to go trudge through the past and all the stuff that didn't work. So while, while we're still kind of getting to know you and before yeah. we get into the you know nuts and bolts and the real, you know, the real meat and protein of this, um, mm-hmm. What sets you apart from all the other relationship coaches that are out there? Yeah, I think two things. One, a lot of relationship coaches do deal with dating and in the front end of relationships and to actually look at a relationship, you know, a coach from a place of people that are in long-term relationships and marriages and to get that support right away, they automatically think therapist and counselor. So I think just who I work with from that perspective. And then the second thing is I work with individuals and not couples. So I will work with both, but you are completely separate. There may be on occasion, a conversation that'll help facilitate, but I really, there's a couple of reasons why I do that. One, in my experience during marriage counseling, there was a lot of shame that came up about where I went wrong where he went wrong. And then it just created this really icky dynamic within there. And it had nothing to do with a therapist, but just, you know, sometimes you're like, well, how come you didn't tell me this before? Feelings like that, there might be embarrassment. There might, you know, feel like there's blame and judgment going on. And it doesn't necessarily always feel like a safe space with your partner to share some of those things. So when I can coach, when I coach individually, it is a safe place. You get to process, you get to vent, and then we're going to you know, give you a moment to do that. And then we're going to focus on what do you want to create from that? And then I help facilitate that, right? So I'm not necessarily, the, I'm not the fixer. I'm just going to help you learn how to connect and communicate with your partner on your own, because we have so much more power within our relationship than we realize. So I'm just kind of the conduit for that. I'm not, I'm not the the fixer that says, you should do this, you should do that, because that was something else that happened in our relationship. Um, you know, the therapist telling us and nobody what to do, and nobody likes to be told what to do. So this gives you complete autonomy to decide what it is that feels aligned for you. And I love that because I, I, I do tell my clients a different type of coach, but I tell my clients the same thing is I'm giving you tools, right? Yes. For your in the toolkit, and you're really the ones who are doing the hard work and heavy lifting. Well, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about self-worth. But before we go, Allison, tell folks how they can reach you. You can find me on my website at uh, forloveofyou.com. You can find me on Instagram at Your Relationship Revolution and on TikTok at Relationship Revolution. Wonderful. You are listening to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford-Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford-Mills, living it up, loving it up, letting it go. If you missed any portion of today's episode, you can catch it on GetRootedRadio.com. That's GetRootedRadio.com. 
Don't forget to subscribe online to receive the latest news, events, specials, and words of encouragement. That's GetRootedRadio.com. Welcome back to my guest, Allison. Thank you so much for joining us. So happy to be here. So this segment is all about self-worth. And self-worth is the, really that internal sense of being good enough and worthy of love and belonging from others. Um, it's sometimes confused with self-esteem, which relies on external factors such as successes or achievements to define one's worth and can often be inconsistent, leading to someone struggling with a feeling of worthy. And that is what we need to talk about because I know you agree with this, Allison, you know, self-worth has a lot to do with relationships, whatever relationship that might be. So what does self-worth really have to do with a great relationship? I think it's the foundation of it. And I just want to pause for a moment because you distinguished the difference between self-love and self-esteem or, and I think, or self-worth um, with self-esteem. And I also want to talk about self-care and self-love, right? And I think that when people like, well, I love myself, I get a massage and I go to the gym and that self-care is a component of self-love slash self-worth. I see them very similar. Yes, I, so I totally agree. Totally agree on that because there are things you might do for self-care and self-love, but it's more than just that getting a massage. I mean, and some, for some people, I mean, getting that massage is downtime, time away, feeling that you can pamper yourself without judgment. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it, but it's a little bit more. <laughs> Absolutely. And I just, I really wanted to distinguish that because I think sometimes there's just, yes, that sense of, well, that's enough. And self-worth plays, it, it has an impact on so many different aspects of our relationship. And so the one place where this like really hit me when I was in my second marriage, I, well, I've always struggled with my weight. That has also always been a place that I've been very insecure about, um, very concerned, not trusting that I'm beautiful because there's more of me <laughs> than others. And as I, um, in my second marriage, that was always a trigger point for me. That was something I didn't necessarily believe or trust that he saw me as beautiful, as worthy. And so I really sp spent a lot of energy waiting for him or expecting him to convince me, right? So I was always fishing. I was always fishing for the compliments. I was always like, does this make me look fat? Or I'm not good enough, or I'm not pretty enough to go do that. Whatever the thing was, <laughs> there were lots and lots. And ultimately in my desire for him to convince me that he loved me enough, that I was beautiful enough, that I was enough, my belief was stronger than his. And I convinced him that I wasn't. And so that I believe was the demise of our marriage that my insecurity, my expectation that he will love me enough that that would sur that would survive it all that that would be the the glue that kept us together and so when i really reflected back on what happened in that marriage and i could see that that was all me <laughs> and as i stepped away from that i poor guy had couldn't win that one there was nothing that he could do <laughs> because it was all about me and so as i stepped into my personal development and i really worked on what does self-worth mean? And how do I step into that? Um, you know, you set the bar, like when I was dating, when you are, when you know your worth, you set the bar at how you will be treated. And you, there's just setting the bar, um, knowing how to ask for what you want, that you're deserving you could then communicate much more directly and clearly instead of fishing. I mean, has anyone ever said, if you love me, will you do this for me? Right? It's almost like, well, if you're, if you love me enough, then you'll do this thing. And it's still that, that fishing 
or that putting someone on the spot versus like, hey, I know that I'm deserving of your help. So I'm just going to ask you directly, can you help with this thing? And it's not this negotiation type thing. Um, and self-worth is also creating your own joy, right? Like that I, you don't have to wait for somebody to give you permission, that you can take time for self-care, that you know that you are worthy of having all the things in this world that everyone else in your life has. has. This goes both for men and women, but I think especially for women as nurturers that are always giving, 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 it feels selfish to, to take care of ourselves. And I think that is learning to communicate, knowing, knowing what you want first, right? Um, yeah, not seeking clarity. that outside validation because you will set yourself up for failure every time if you are relying on someone else or something else to make you happy. If you know your self-worth and you learn to love yourself because you, you, you really can't be in a, in a good, strong relationship until you love yourself. I mean, and in that way, you also show people how to love you mm -hmm. because, and, and I know I, I've been there, I've, I've done it, right? It's, you're just not setting those appropriate boundaries, or maybe you set them, but then you move the line <laughs> and you're wondering why the person keeps Yes. stepping over the line while well, you just moved it three times and you're, you're allowing that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, as you said, setting those appropriate boundaries, but then also communicating them because sometimes we set boundaries, but we never say, you know, we just assume that what's, what's important to me is important to everybody. And right. as we know from everybody has a different perspective. Every, you know, what is okay with somebody is not okay with somebody else. And unless we set the boundaries and communicate what those are, we're not going to get what we need because we never told them. Mm -hmm. People can't read, read your mind. <laughs> and, and I think that joy, as you said, is, you know, that self-worth is, is creating that, that happiness, that joy and not comparing it to something else. Um, cause that comparison, comparison is the thief of joy. <laughs> yep. It, it totally yep. is. And when we're looking out at other relationships, you know, I, I always say, don't look at social media. Everyone only puts their A side on social media. Yes. You know, what's on the other side of the, of the vinyl of the record, you know, maybe dating myself a little bit there. What's on the back of the cassette player? No, <laughs> the cassette tape. So it's not just always a hit single that you got going on there. So how does that self-worth then actually strengthen the relationship? I mean, it might seem obvious, but how is that? Because I think some people say, well, that's just, you know, loving yourself. Maybe that's being boastful. What, how does it strengthen your relationship with your partner when you have that self-worth? Yeah, absolutely. So when you know what you're deserving of, you're much more willing to go after it. And so if that is stronger communication with your partner, if it's more date nights, if um, it's a better sex life, when you know what you want and you said you know earlier, you have that clarity, then it's just much easier to take the next step rather than like, well, does he or she want it? And you're always sort of playing in that, that space of, again, the fishing. Um, so I think that it also takes you out of victim mode which is a big thing in relationships. Well, he or she never does this. Have you asked them? Yeah. When you know your worth, you're again, a lot of these things kind of cycle through or, you know, or part of the, um, yeah, part of the, the cycle that they all show up in different ways, right? But that when you stop saying, placing blame and part of self-worth is owning all of you the good, the bad. And then from that place, you can show up so much more powerfully in your relationship. And I'm laughing um, and I apologize. I'm laughing because all no. I keep, calls I keep seeing is that scene um, from the notebook where, where she's, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> and he just continues to repeat it. And it is when, when you don't know what you want, you may know what you don't want, right? but yes. a lot of people, and I mean, I, I know I can be this way, what do I want? 
you know, and you think you know what you want. Oh, I'm pretty simple. I just want this. Oh, wait, and this, and then. And so it is that self worth. Absolutely. Um, and just, I think the one last thing is that it's actually a gift for your partner to not have to be responsible for your joy, not trying to read your mind, <laughs> being allowed to focus on ourselves without guilt. Right. And especially when both partners stand in their own self-worth, they can say, this is what I need. Whether it comes from you, whether it comes from a hobby, whether it comes from a career, I am responsible for me. And then you get to show up authentically as yourself. And, and it's not, it's otherwise you become codependent and that's not a healthy relationship. Right. So having two individual whole, well, happy people in a relationship. Um, so just that self-worth takes so much pressure off that, you know, that person, and then they get to be happy and they get to show up as themselves in the relationship. Yeah. And when you have that authenticity coming in from both parties and that open line of communication and both people knowing their worth and openly discussing it, it's, you know, nobody, it's the classic, well, you should have known but why, how, right? You can know somebody inside and out and yet still don't know everything that they're thinking and everything that they need. Right. So, and that especially because we change, right? What we needed five years ago is not what yeah. we need yeah. today, right? And, I, and, and, and for people to say, well, you've changed, it's kind of like, I hope so. I, I hope, <laughs> I hope I've grown. I hope I come become a better person, but Let's just take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about gratitude and moving forward. Before we go, Allison, tell folks again how they can reach you. They can reach me at www.forloveofyou.com, on Instagram at Your Relationship Revolution, and TikTok, Relationship Revolution. Wonderful. I am Erica Gifford Mills, and you are listening to Get Rooted Radio. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills, living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Don't forget to visit GetRootedRadio.com to listen to a replay of this episode or look at other episodes, sign up for helpful tips, and learn about upcoming events. That's GetRootedRadio.com. Welcome back to my guest, Allison. Thank you so much for being on with us today. So happy to be here. So during the last segment, we started off with a very important concept of self-worth. Um, and we're, now we're going to move forward, pun intended, <laughs> um, since we will be talking about gratitude and moving forward. And a great deal of research has shown that gratitude helps us um, initiate, maintain, and strengthen our relationships. Um, gratitude may make our romantic relationships closer and more satisfying, encourage us to feel more invested in friendships, and even cause us to be more helpful coworkers. But what specifically does gratitude have to do with creating a great relationship? I think it is one of the core pillars of creating a great relationship. I want to tell a story because this was the absolute, I wouldn't be where I am right now without this experience. So Austin and I, he's my partner. We had dated for a year and this was after my divorces. I dated a lot of men and he was pretty amazing. He is pretty amazing. So I'll give away the ending, but you were, you were just amazing. Now, uh, not so much. No. <laughs> so, but we dated for a year and what I did in my own fear of commitment and, you know, really getting serious with someone is I started to focus on like, the three things that weren't perfect about him. And I made that mean everything. And so at that point, I was like, now I'm prepared to settle. And, you know, early on in the episode, we talked about, I felt like I was either at um, three strikes and you're out or third time's a charm. And I'm like, <laughs> kind of like, which one is this? And I actually, I called it off. I said, I, I'm not about to settle. These three things are kind of big deals. And um, thank you for a great year. And we moved on. What happened over the course of the 
the next year is what changed my life. And that was, instead of getting over him, I started missing him. And I missed all the things that were amazing about him. And the list was like long, 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 long of all the things that just are wonderful about him. All his qualities, all his characteristics, his thoughtfulness, his intelligence, his sense of humor, how he parents. Yeah, the list is just endless. And I recognized after that year of like just adding to this list and comparing him to all the other guys I was dating that I was just focused on the wrong things. And so fortunately, I, I reached out and fortunately he was gracious enough and um, he gave me another shot and we have been back together six and a half years, I think. But that was such a profound experience. And so through that, on those days when I get frustrated, right? There, no relationship's perfect. He's still not perfect. I'm not perfect. But in those moments when I get annoyed, when he doesn't leave the water out of the sink after washing the dishes, <laughs> like, I'm like, dude, this is gross. And then I step back to gratitude and I'm like, he washed the dishes. Like, I'm grateful that I did not have to wash the dishes. And just always stepping into that place of gratitude and when you are great, you're sincerely grateful for all the things, it shifts your perspective. I mean, you can choose to focus on the negative and you'll get more negative and then you'll just start to see all the things and they'll just keep adding up and adding up and adding up. Or you can choose to do the same thing with the positive. It's that mindset, the, you know, mindset matters, right? And it's that having that reset hitting that reset button to it, it's, and it's what you said, when you focus on the positive, you amplify the positive. When you yes. focus on the negative, you amplify the negative. It's like, you're putting that magnifying glass right over it. And it is, I think gratitude is a great way of looking at it because we can be grateful for, like you said, yeah, he left the water in the sink, but he did the dishes like, wow. Right. And, and, and it is those, those things that, that really matter when we give it a chance to look at it, if we're always looking for the bad and the problems, we are going to find it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, it's inevitable, like, or you're like finding something wrong with somebody or it's the same way though. You can ignore the red flags, but, <laughs> but it is, it's important that are you looking at this from a level clear head or are you trying to find something wrong. Right. Absolutely. That's just all relationships take energy. So where do you want to focus your energy? Focusing yeah. right on the negative. And again, you'll always find something. None of us are perfect. So you can hone in like I did to the point of losing someone that was really wonderful because I focused on those few things and then I amplified them. Right. Or, you know, the little things I'm getting ahead of myself, little things have a big impact, but these little things, and even I know someone's like, well, that's his responsibility to, to maybe wash the dishes. It doesn't matter. I didn't have to do it. I am still grateful yeah. that he did it. And when you start think, looking at all those little things that your partner does um, contribute. Yeah. And, and we're going to, we're going to definitely talk about that in the next episode. Uh, next, the next segment, <laughs> I know. I'm but, so excited about it. All. I know. Um, but now you had mentioned earlier that you aren't the fixer, right? That right. that's right. not your job, but we notice a lot of that. It feels like there is always something to fix in a relationship and not that you're fixing the other person because take it from a fixer. I tend to be that right. wanting right. to fix somebody, make somebody better. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so guilty of that and, and I and need to not be like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't believe in fixing. Can you explain that a little bit more? I do, yeah, I can. I really focus on moving forward. And so here's how I think a lot of relationships go and how people, even if you're not consciously aware of it, you think it does go. So when you start dating and early in your relationship, you have all these amazing, yummy feelings about your partner. It's all fun and, and exciting. And you get into the relationship and you go down the road and things start to get a little bumpy and, and wonky. And you're like, I really want those feelings back over here. 
And so what do we think we have to do? Cause they're like back there. It's almost like we hit this dead end wall <laughs> and now we got to sludge all the way through. We got to fix everything that went wrong first to get those feelings back. And that's what I want to challenge because as you said earlier, we change our partner changes, our life circumstances change yep. and to fix something needs, you need to, means to put it back together again, the way that it was right. And the pieces are all different now. So trying to put that, like, that is so hard. <laughs> and if you're not the same people any longer, you're in a different stage of life. Your, you know, life circumstances are different. Kids are, you have kids or the kids are now out of the house or whatever it may be that when you start thinking about what do I want, how do I want to move forward in my relationship? What do I want it to look like? Then you can start moving forward and creating that. And yeah. it's just it takes this huge weight off. And yes, there are some things that may be bumpy. And my suggestion is you put them in a box for a little bit and you set them to the side and you move forward. And the stuff that's really important will show back up again. But instead I, of thinking. I like what you said there though, is, is that I think it's important to recognize we aren't the same people. And do you want to make it how it was or do you want to make it better, right? Do you... <laughs> In, in not only what do you want the relationship to look like, but what do you want it to feel like? Because that feeling might really change the look of it because maybe it's not your perfect fairy tale image, but it feels what you want to feel like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's again, that's what you're going after. So when you think about how to connect with your partner in the quote unquote old days, maybe connecting with your partner was shooting pool and having some beers at the bar. And now you're at a whole nother level of intimacy. And you're like, I want to have some deep connection. I, and it's more about who you're being yes. rather than what you're doing. Yeah. And that then again, and now you're in this place where you're like, okay, we can move forward. And it's always evolving yeah. like, again. It, go ahead. No, as I say, it, it's like you said, relationships aren't linear. You know, it, it's not this perfect straight line, especially because it's, you know, I, I was saying to somebody today that relationships in my mind aren't 50-50, right? Because they might be 70-30 sometimes, or it might be the other way around, or, you know, having to pick up, I don't want to say the slack, that's poor use of words, but pick up the slack when somebody's having a bad day, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to how do you reconnect with them? How do you, you know, re reimagine your relationship? Right. Um, I also don't believe relationships are 50, 50. I think if you are, you are half-assing it. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> eh, but, truly, we'll edit it. Yeah. <laughs> but that if, um, right. And that ultimately the intention should be both partners are always giving a hundred percent but that your hundred percent might look differently. So that's very comparable to what you're saying in terms of 70, 30, when I am bogged down at work and I am on a huge deadline in my project, like my hundred percent might just be hanging out with you for 20 minutes instead of a full date night. But that's still like the intention for each one of us is am I showing up the best that I can in my relationship? Because most often we end up treating our partner, the person we're supposed to love the most, we end up treating them the worst. <laughs> yep. It's so we, we treat the ones we love, we get more upset with them because we can't take it out on somebody else, right? <laughs> right. Well, and to vent is one thing, right? A, a safe space to be able to like, kind of just say, I've had a rough day and this is what's going on. But when we get snarky and snippy and those things um that really takes a toll on your relationship and i think just kind of getting back to the moving forward and the changing one of the biggest complaints my clients have is that they are bored they are bored in their relationship and so i'm like that's the exciting part about creating and being able to move forward like what do you want it to look like and let's move toward creating that and playing with that um and to get in that cycle of, I see a cycle of reigniting 
and then reconnecting and reinventing. And the okay. better that you get at that, the tighter, like they start to overlap each other, right? So if there's a couple and you have really disconnected, you haven't, you, you're more like roommates or teammates than soulmates. The first thing is to reignite the, the, the passion and the fun. And we do that through play. And then once you start connecting that way, then you can start to have some of those deeper conversations and truly reconnect on a more emotionally intimate level, deeper level. And then you can really, once now you're a little bit closer, now you can be like, okay, what do we really want this to look like together? And that's the reinvention part. And that is a good place to take a break because we're going to talk about and really wrap up our discussion with the little things that we gave you a little hint about <laughs> earlier and why playing is the way to go. So this is Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. If you missed any of the information during the last segments, go to GetRootedRadio.com. That's GetRootedRadio.com to listen to the replay. Don't forget to subscribe, sign up for tips and special events, and pricing for upcoming coaching sessions at GetRootedRadio.com. Welcome back to my guest, Allison. Tell folks how they can reach you one more time and learn about your services. Hi, Erica. Yes, they can reach me at ForLoveOfYou.com. On Instagram, they can find me at Your Relationship Revolution. And on TikTok, they can find me at Relationship Revolution. Wonderful. So we've been talking about the different steps and different keys to really making a great relationship. Mm -hmm. And we kind of hinted at it earlier that we all know that the little things are important. And that really is one of your core philosophies is the little things have that big impact, as you mentioned. So what is a little thing? And why does it really matter? A little thing is, could be something like bringing your partner a cup of coffee. It could be saying an intentional thank you. Thank you for getting the kids ready for bed tonight. It could be an extra long hug. It could be um, like the list is endless of all the, just the little ways to show appreciation, thoughtfulness, kindness, the things that we did when we were dating, right? Like all the little notes and the text that says, just thinking about you, those are the things that matter. And ultimately when we've been together a long time, we forget about those things and we just get in our daily grind. And <clears throat> when we do that, it just, we start to lose value in each other. And that's the, we lose the, the, the excitement and, and the thoughtfulness. And that's when we start to move into the, the teammate or the roommate phase rather than that soulmate. And so sometimes when our relationship is bumpy and we are, we're feeling disconnected, we think we have to do all these really hard, big things to get it back on track. And that feels overwhelming. And when we're already exhausted, when we're already overworked on the to-do list is so long, we're like, wait, now I'm supposed to get into this program or I need to go to counseling or therapy like that just that feels overwhelming and so a lot of people then are shut down and they're like I don't have the capacity for that no. and, and I it. and people who've been in a either long-term marriage or long-term relationship you know you don't bring me flowers anymore or you don't rub my feet if we're just sitting here anymore it, and and it's those little things that people do forget about, right? It, it's like, I want you to court me again, you know, yes. dating myself, it's talking uh -huh. about courting, but, <laughs> but you, you do, you do miss those. And it is those little things that mean so much because, or it's, I was at a store and I know this is your favorite chocolate. And so I picked it up for you and I gave it to you for no reason. And it's, it is those, the thought that counts. Mm -hmm. I think means so much more than people realize, you know, you don't need to buy an expensive outlandish gift or make this uh, outrageous <laughs> gesture, like, like the promposals and the, you know, homecoming. <laughs> How do you live up to that after a while? It's showing that love and respect and kindness and thoughtfulness 
on a daily basis. I mean, maybe not mm -hmm. literally daily basis, but a daily basis that your partner knows you are still mine. You are still the one I think about. You're this, you know, when I see something at a store that reminds me of you, you're the one who I'm thinking. Yes. Yes to all that. We tend to overcomplicate what it, it takes and it doesn't always have to be flowers. That's clearly just an example. Um, but when we, <clears throat> we all crave to be loved, valued, and appreciated. So in what ways, and we just need reminders, like we just get busy. So the, the thing is to create a reminder for yourself. And, and I don't think it's far-fetched to set a goal of doing one little thing each day for your partner. It's, it could be a hug. Like it could be a hug. <laughs> I have not, I've had so many clients tell me, oh my gosh, when we did that like 20 second, like instead of the quick hug and, you know, peck on the cheek that they actually hugged each other, like how much they wow. felt loved and connected with that hug. Yeah. And so and, it just, go ahead. It's both partners, right? I mean, we have to remember, we're not just talking about ladies right. wanting this. Men need this too. Yes. And we need to remember that it's both parties equally need to be giving this and receiving it, right? Right, absolutely. Like. I fully believe in coming from a place of love when you give also, because some people are like, well, especially if their relationship is bumpy and, and their partner's not quite where they're at. First of all, it's your relationship. What do you want it to look like? And, and what are you willing to go after and do it uh, to get it? But then when you give from a place of love and your partner starts to feel valued, respected, and loved, they most likely will start giving it back. There's no stronging, um, strong arming, nagging, guilting in order to get you know your needs met. So, and even I just I want to piggyback. You mentioned you know you don't rub my feet anymore. Just even that language, right? That when you step into step number one of self worth, then you can simply ask, "Will you rub my feet tonight?" Please. And, and that partner is then, sorry. No, 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 Keep, no, go ahead, finish. I was just gonna say then that partner is just much more willing to, um, to give that to you if they're not feeling guilted or bad about the thing that they haven't done for a while. Right. right, so we're almost out of time, but I wanna get in to what is, why is play the way? Yes. Oh my gosh. This is one of my favorite things. So we always think of play as the reward. When we are going through something bumpy in our relationship, we can't have fun. We can't laugh with each other. We have to hold on to all the anger and frustration <laughs> until it's all fixed. And the anger and the frustration is actually the wedge that keeps us apart. And so when we can put some of our differences aside temporarily and just go play with each other, we can connect in a different way. And often that is the thing that puts you back on the same team. And when then you're on the same team, then you're much more likely to be willing to compromise, collaborate, listen, truly create a partnership. And so why not have fun? Like it's the, like the way to create, not just yes. the end result. And I think it goes along the line of when you have a goal, you're not waiting to celebrate your little victories until you right. did the big one. It's the same in a relationship. Yes. Play, have fun. It's okay to laugh, even if you're arguing a little bit. Yes. You know, <laughs> and I think that is so important. So I know we're just about out of time. So I want one last time, tell folks how they can reach you. They can reach me at forloveofyou.com. They can reach me on Instagram at your relationship revolution. They can catch me on TikTok at Relationship Revolution. And if they're interested in my community, they can reach me at member.relationship-revolution.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Allison, for your time today. And I want to thank you all for tuning in to Get Rooted Radio. If you missed any part of today's episode or want to listen again, go to GetRootedRadio.com for the podcast. And don't forget to tune in the first and third Monday of each month at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, and 2 p.m. Pacific right here on Transformation Talk Radio. 
Thank you for tuning in. Have an amazing day. And I'm looking forward to the next time on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, and letting it go. Visit GetRootedRadio.com if you have missed any part of this hit show. And tune in on TransformationTalkRadio.com to live fearlessly in your more and powerfully rooted in your unlimited yes. For more information and to work with Erica directly, visit GetRootedRadio.com. That's GetRootedRadio.com and get ready to live it up, love it up, and let it go.